Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, at 23 hours and 32 minutes into the 15th day of November 2021, we're out for another uh, observational night. And we have an hour's worth of uh, filming to do because uh, we've got two vlogs to get through. Anyways, this is the observation vlog, and uh, we're going to take a bit of a different ta t uh, track around here. I've got everything sort of lined up. And let's give you a title. We don't exit the browser. I just want to minimize it. Sometimes things don't go exactly according to plan. Anyways, today's title is uh, Created Reality and Edward Bernays. Uh, these things are essential to understand what's going on today. These, this is part of the history. Uh, and if you don't seem to understand these things, then... Uh, well, these are, the, these are the things that are kind of left out of a lot of, a lot of different discussions. And they can, they, and I brought them up because we talked about Flat Earth. And these things are, are central to understanding Flat Earth. Now, we're not, approve, we're, not, uh, we're not giving credit to Flat Earth in terms of existence, but rather we want to understand how the Flat Earth controversy, the conspiracy theory, came about. Typically, it's because of the distrust of government that the government has lied to us so often that you can't trust what we're, what we're seeing. So if you can't trust what you're seeing currently, that means you have to go into history. And that's what we did. This is where we find the ley lines. This is why we find, find the different grids. We find the development of the calendar. We find from Plato the understanding of geodes in uh, basically three-dimensional uh, 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 geometry. This is how you move from Euclid. Euclid is flat space geometry, two dimensions. You bring this in with uh, Pythagoras. Uh, between Euclid and Pythagoras, you end up having some form of calculus emerge. Uh, but it pick, doesn't pick up as calculus until you have uh, Newton and Leibniz. Newton, Newton and Leibniz bring independently of each other, bring forward uh, calculus as a form of mathematics into Europe. And this is sort of what the European Enlightenment is based on. The Renaissance, in many cases, is based on the concept of, uh, of calculus. The intermediate path would be, uh, would be Fibonacci and then, uh, d then uh, Da Vinci. Uh, and then you would move to, uh, then you would move to, uh, what is his name, uh, Newton and Leibniz. Although I, w I wouldn't be surprised if Galileo had some, uh, some of his fingers into this uh, uh, understanding as well. Because a large chunk of the stuff is hidden. It's not, it was never designed for public view. Uh, when someone publishes a book or a researcher publishes a book, it's not there. The underlying notes that sort of feed into the book are never released. It's not until much later on after they die that the diary, the, diary, the, the, the log is released, the journal is released. These people kept extensive amounts of journals and the uh, our life as cyborg alpha is part of the journaling uh, it's the notes it's part of these the, the underlying existence uh, the vlogs here observation vlog and the next one the gnosis vlogs will be the verbal essays these are rough draft essays and of course things will evolve from here uh, and this is how you, I, I keep uh, some of the stuff in the public eye because you can't put you can't put everything in the public eye and there's a, there's a certain amount of stuff, particularly within physics, that needs to be hidden. Because particularly when it crosses over into the Gnostic path, as we do go we'll into, uh, uh, into uh, the uh, Gnosis vlog, you'll understand that a large chunk of the Gnostic understanding was designed to be hidden. It's secret. This is how your, your secret societies emerges from Gnosticism. So anyways, uh, let's get into um, the first one. Uh, gotta wait for the, uh, the uh, internet is a little slow. I'm using my phone as the uh, as the internet that's connected to the other thing, and it doesn't always uh, come up properly the way it should. Uh, 
Okay, the first one is the, the fake moon landing. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> most your, 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 your hollow earth and your fake moon landing are based on movies. Uh, this case, the, uh, the, the, the fake moon landing is based on the 1977 movie uh, Capricorn One, starring O.J. Simpson. <laughs> so everyone knows him because of, because of what's, what's happened. Uh, so that's him. There's also Elliot Gould, uh, James Brolin, and, and a whole bunch of others who are, are involved in this. And this is, this is says, uh, when uh, the first manned mission to Mars, <laughs> this is from IMDb, when the first manned mission is, uh, to Mars is deemed to be unsafe, the scrub uh, uh, and scrubbed on the launch, on the launch pad, anxious authorities must scramble to save face and retain their funding. Uh, you know, screw up, cover your ass, and keep the funding rolling. Think of this uh, during Pfizer's trial. Uh, and the unthinkable plot to fake the mission is launched. And that's what it is. And this, it, this is where the conspiracy emerges from. From this movie. This movie was uh, 1977, 1978. Uh, I didn't first hear about the fake moon landing until about uh, 1995, 2000, around that time period there. Let's say 2000. It was as the internet was emerging, this is where the fake moon landing began to occur. That's because a large chunk of the files that were coming out of NASA were, were being dumped onto the internet, and you could sort of find uh, all these particular files on it. And, of course, there was somebody who probably saw this movie and sort of, oh, the whole thing's faked. And because there are, there are uh, movie nerds out there who think that a large chunk of these movies are real. Well, and I'm, I'm going to say this. It doesn't necessarily mean the movie wasn't, or, or <clears throat> rephrase it's not that the movie doesn't have an aspect of reality to it. We all understand that governments, if, they're, if they've made a mistake and they're going to be exposed, will do everything they can to cover up the truth. This is with the police, this is with the FBI, the, the judges, the, 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 the Department of Justice, those of your prosecutors. Everywhere you look, when something goes wrong, there's someone there trying to go, oh, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't me. I wasn't anywhere near there. You know, cover your own ass. This is what perpetually goes on. So we understand how this could then turn into a conspiracy about the moon. So here's your origin for it. It's a movie called Capricorn One. You can go look for it on the internet if you want. Uh, the next movie that comes up is uh, Jules Verne. So it's, a, it's a book by Jules Verne. Jules Verne, uh, who is a science fiction writer, a lot like H.G. Wells. Uh, and you can follow his movie. It's called Journey to the Center of the Earth. Right? Another movie, uh, and it became a movie in 1959, so it's an older movie. Go there, watch this movie, and what do you see? Hollow Earth. <laughs> Hollow Earth. What happens is because the involvement uh, of the government inside the media and sort of assisting with the, the movie making, understanding the, sort of the relationship between Hollywood and the government. And this is where I said, you know, you know oh, I don't wish to harp on the point, but Mrs. Mrs. L seems to have missed her target. The target should have been Disney and Hollywood. That would have taken care of the government and everything else. But the thing is, she didn't do that. She allowed the government to take control over things. So the government's going to decide what laws have been broken, what laws haven't been broken. There is going to be the so-called so procedural trial that this is what we're seeing now with Rittenhouse. Uh, so what happens, the girls aren't out of danger. This is now thrown into the legal world of uh, the uh, court system and the law, and they will have to spend uh, much of their time uh, in and out of these courtrooms being re-victimized again and again and again. Because what happens is that, you know, and this is what Lionel talked about. It says you see a victim there of a crime, and it's, how does the how does the uh, the assailant walk away? Because the the 
By the time the thing goes to trial, the victim has healed and no longer shows sign of the blunt force trauma. Uh, so there is no trauma visible in the actual person. But yet, at the same time, you know, do you keep, keep the uh, do you keep as a prosecutor in order to win your case and put this dirt bag behind jail where he belongs? Do you keep be victimizing the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the the, the um, your victim of crime again and again and again in order to keep that tra- trauma present in front of the uh, jury? What's the difference between that and, and, and being the initial rapist? There is none. So what happens is, is that you see in the courtrooms, you see in the media, that there is this creation of reality. And what's happening today, and this is what's freaking out Lionel and what's happening freaking out a lot of people, is the reality is coming to an end. It's collapsing. It's, it's dying. My argument is it's already dead. The reality is already dead. It has been dead for a while. We've been living in a created reality for a long period of time. And you would have to go back to Edward Bernays to understand this called the the creation or manufacturing of consent. How do you create a world? And this is the thing is that this is all based off of uh, 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 Sigmund Freud's work. Edward Bernays was Sigmund Freud's nephew. Uh, Sigmund Freud's sister, Anna Freud, got, got involved in all of this, I think. I know it's Anna Freud, but I don't know whether she was a sister or the aunt or or, or, uh, or the daughter. Uh, can't really be too sure what it is. Uh, I, I can go back and check, but at this point in time, uh, I can actually do a very quick reference right now to see what this is. Because Anna Freud is extremely important. Anna Freud typifies the United States prior to 1960. Okay, so it's Anna Freud. Yeah, it went down again. keeps disconnecting. Anna Freud. Okay, the youngest child, the youngest child of uh, Sigmund Freud. And and the the, the mother, uh, the mother, and this is how she ends up related to uh, Edward Bernays, is Martha Bernays. So, you know, short, small world. What they do in here, and this is in Wikipedia, and this is where you have to be careful with Wikipedia. Wikipedia continuously understates the reality of, of Anna Freud. Uh, and that's because a large chunk of what she did was hidden. And it was, it, this was within, this was with intention, this was designed by government because a large chunk of what she did ended up in psychological warfare. She's at the core of psychological warfare and at the core of uh, social engineering. The whole concept of the American dream and the attitudes that America's, the Americans have today and they're sort of called, you know, this old world Democrat, the old world, world American. Well, what is that? You know, the white world. That's Hannah Freud. She is the construct of the American identity. This was fundamentally shifted with Timothy Leary and Ram Dass. This was 1960 to the 1970s. This is what produced the psychedelic revolution. It wasn't Wavy Gravy in, in, in Berkeley. It was Timothy Leary and Ram Dust. These were the, this is where the core came from because they're the ones who were experimenting uh, with, in, with with along with their students and a number of other people invited to the party, including uh, L. Ron Hubbard. These were the, this was the LSD crowd. This was the uh, psilocybin, the mushroom crowd. This was the uh, Ergot poisoning, the ergot, uh, the uh, lysergic acid crowd. That's what LSD, 
That's who these people were. And their view was was to, to expand the mind in much the way you saw. Again, their, their influence, <coughs> these experts and top doctors <laughs> were influenced by a book. Which book were they influenced by? They were influenced by the book, Alice in Wonderland. And it's the part of Alice in Wonderland where she takes the mushrooms. This is where the whole sense of drug addiction comes from. And that the drugs were not necessarily an issue of addiction, but rather of an exploration of the mind beyond your what we'll call the standard consciousness. When you're awake, you have a one form of consciousness. When you're asleep, you have another form of consciousness. Well, their argument is that there is a third consciousness above the the the, the uh, awake and the sleep uh, consciousness. And this is this is something that they're talking about woke. The woke have no concept of this. This is completely. If you, talk, you, know, you listen to them, they say, "Oh, I'm woke." Ask them why. Ask them how they came about this, and you begin to understand that they don't have an understanding of Alice in Wonderland. They don't have a understanding of psilocybin, they don't have an LS, understanding of LSD, and how that they're talking about a state of consciousness that is outside of, you know, the higher forms of consciousness. And this, is it, again, this is done by creation. It was designed to keep people away from these other forms. Uh, I mean, the whole world is set up like this. You know, want, you want to create the United States as this great, a massive society, this this uh, ultimate ultimate uh, standard of freedom. Oh, that's Edward Bern- that's Edward Bernays and uh, Anna Freud. They created the entire perspective of this. They spent the the number of psychologists that they had on staff, and that they fun- funded for research was unbelievable. In order to achieve this, though, they're at the core. Of, of MK Ultra. MK Ultra emerges from the work of Edward Bernays and Anna Freud. They wanted to know how to control the population. This is what we're seeing today. Much of what we see today in your advertising, your TV, even, even in your news, is all MK Ultra. It's about control, it's about mind control, how you think, how you feel. The first trigger in to, how, to change how a person thinks. What they understand is you first have to get to the emotion. You have to scare them. You have to bring in a sense of paranoia. Once the paranoia is planted, you build everything else from that structure on. And this is what's going on oh, again again. Why is Greta Thunberg Greta Thunberg? Because when she was young, she was given these, watched these movies in school by the teacher that traumatized her. This trauma, this, trauma, this uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome, she now has became the core of Greta Thunberg's enlightenment. That this is this is part of her woke. Talk to most of the young people today who talk talk about the extinction theories of human beings, and it's all the sense of paranoia. It's not set in reality. It's set in paranoia. It's a belief. It is a religion, and they believe in this religion as much as any other religion around you. And there's no way to persuade them it, it, again because it's not an issue of persuasion. That's why he said, well, why doesn't that person, I gave them all this data, I gave them all this information, why do they simply say no and I'm not going to look at this stuff anymore? Because it's about, it's about belief, it's what you believe, it's how you believe. And this is what happens, you talk to, a, 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 you know, these these conspiracy theorists who are on the right, who are typically, these are your, these are your, uh, your, your, your flat earthers, your, your, your uh, hollow earth theories, uh, fake moon landing, and they've got data to back themselves up, but the thing is, they're they're only cher- they're cherry picking the data, they're pe- cherry picking the information. They're only accepting the perspectives and ideas that agree with them. In other words, these things, this confirmation in terms of their data, make them feel good. It's emotion. There it is, right? It's it's emotion. And the same thing is true for the woke and the vaxxers. 
They're not pulling out any data. How, how come the, neither side is pulling out data properly? Because uh, anything that has to do with uh, virology, vaccines, or like that uh, along those lines, is considered to be biological warfare. The, the labs that handle all this stuff were all under the contract of the Department of Defense or DARPA, which is also the Department of Defense. They're not independent. They're, they're, they're weapons contractors. And so a large chunk of the work they do is classified. It has to go through a committee that determines which data is safe to release and which data isn't. So what's coming out to the public isn't the raw data, but rather it's a redacted form of data. In other words, your data has been redacted. So, you, so neither side has the entire truth. In order to get to the entire truth, you have to understand mechanism. You have, and it's a, it's a big dig. It's, it's, it, it, you have to go very deep in order to find uh, what the mechanism is, because you have to have an understanding of virology. And, and that, but that virology is simply your entry point. Because you're now dealing with these, these large structures of protein spikes and uh, mRNA and stuff like that, those are large molecules. And particularly, they're organic molecules. So you have to go into organic chemistry. You have to understand how proteins form, how, how lipids and proteins interact. This is what happens in terms of digestion within your body. Want us to understand mRNA? Well, you're going to have to not only have the virology and organic chemistry, but now because of the structure of the molecule, you, molecule you're dealing with and the size of it, you have to go into macro, which is a large size, macro molecular, bio, macro molecular chemistry. Oh no! Macro. There is a macro molecular chemistry, but macro molecular physics. That macro molecular physics is entirely based on quantum mechanics, quantum physics. So now you're bumping into quantum physics. Can you get an absolute answer in quantum physics? Well, according to uh, uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you no, know you can't. You can only get an approximation. And unfortunately, when you go to calculus, this is all calculus tells you. You can never get the actual real thing. You can only get an approximation. Proof. They could never find the Higgs boson exactly where it was. They couldn't predict it. They found it approximately. Black holes. They knew they were, oh, we know, oh, we know they're there. Did you find one? No. We have a couple candidates that are black holes. Not, 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 and they're not, oh, not black holes. You have candidates. Why didn't you find them? Well, we don't necessarily know exactly what they are. <laughs> because you can't see them. You, you can only see a black hole based on uh, the effect that it has on the surrounding environment. That's how you know the black hole's there. And so they found stars, like Cygnus X1, that had this sort of the, the fingerprint, and they found the star, they found a star that had the, uh, the uh, fingerprint of a black hole nearby. This is a binary star system, looks looks like. Uh, so usually binary and trinary uh, and even larger star systems typically have a black hole uh, in the center as these the different suns exchange mass between the between them. Of course, the telescope it looks a lot closer, but the sitting here on planet Earth compared to where the sun is, uh, there is a rumor that the sun has a, a twin, a partner known as a binary star. So our, our solar system more than likely is a binary system, but we've just never been able to find it. Uh, and the star from my observation anyways, looks to be like a variable star. It, cha it changes its brightness. So this is why we have changes in, in thermal outputs because as the brightness goes up, the thermal output goes up and you see warmth on the earth. You see uh, across the board from, uh, from where we're up in Toronto all the way down to Bolivia, you see a rise in temperature as the, uh, as the sun ramps up and put, puts up more heat. And you sort of see this sort of uh, signal from the sun, from the uh, solar satellites, that this is indeed the case. In other words, you can observe what the truth is. You, you have, but the thing is, the problem problem with observing is it takes a long time to do this. Uh, if you're sitting down working on a mathematical model, you can do it with, within a few seconds, within a few minutes, uh, on a computer system. Now, with our computer systems the way they are, is the is Da Vinci models all the time. This is what IPPC is, you know, IPCC. The climate model is just that. It's a climate model. It's not reality. It's not observed. Right? Why are they predicting 
you know, they, they give you the prediction, the, 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 the probable uh, uh, number of hospitalizations for CVD or, or the possible number of deaths. They're not giving you the actual, they're giving you a probability, they're giving you a projection. It's because it's work, they're working on a model, they're not working on the real thing. So what happens when they, the, 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 you know, these researchers who do the real thing, who do the real work, understand the mechanism, present their stuff to a board of administrators who only looked at the data, they'll never, the, these, these boards will never admit that they're wrong, just like we saw in uh, Capricorn 1. And so what happens is what's going on now is this creation of fiction. It's, cre it's a created reality. This is what we see in the, see in the Rittenhouse case. Is again, created reality. Most people have no clue what's going on, why Rittenhouse, that case, is so important. Well, what it is, is, is part of the political football. Basically, the Rittenhouse case is your thumb in the air, and you're trying to look for where the political direction is going to go next. It looks like it's swing back to the Republicans. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing. As I said before, I'm anti-establishment. I only, I only vote for Republicans because traditionally they reduce the size of government. That's the only reason I vote for them. I have, it's not an issue, oh, I'm a Republican. No, I vote for them in terms of a pragmatic. Historically, the Republicans are the ones who reduce government. In other words, they create these laws and this and that. They'll talk a lot. But at the end of the day, they would reduce the government so you're left alone. The Democrats, on the hand, other hand, the liberals, will increase your government. They'll, they'll put as many people as you possibly can get in government. I mean, this is what the part of the problem is. They can't pay for things anymore because they've hired so many people that there's no one left to pay the bill. <laughs> you know, someone has to have a private life in order to pay the bills. But these guys are just spending money here. They're, you know, their, their credit card is, these, these are people who, who you're, you're going up to the cash register and they're buying more stuff. They've got a bag, you know, they've got bags, loads of stuff. They have porters carrying the amount of stuff that they're buying out. I mean, consider this. has any woke person considered why these climate conferences are held in remote areas where you have to fly in on private jets? Does this, does this not make sense? Does, does this actually not make sense to you in terms of of protecting the environment? This again, it's, a whole, it's, it's like what you see at the at the at, at the um, gala, uh, Met Gala Awards at, at the MVAs. Who's wearing the masks? Not the royalty, not the celebrities. The servants are. This is the reality. It's the, it's the creation of the view that the servants serve this royal, 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 uh, royalty. This is imperialism. It's not democracy. This is imperialism. This is a group of people who stand above the others. Yet the woke people can't see this and continually vote in this direction because they believe the rhetoric, they believe the creation, the created story, coming out of uh, the Democratic Party. And time after time, we end up with more trouble. And this, you know, does it help black people? No. Black people are in more trouble than, it, than they've been, ever been before. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit more. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's it for this uh, segment, uh, this uh, uh, obser uh, observation vlog. We're going to go on to... Uh, the uh, Gnosis vlog next, and see you there. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.